What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you some lighting tips and tricks in Twinmotion. Let's get started. Here I have a model that I used in a previous video. If you want to know how I did the lighting for the daytime render, then you can watch that video. But in this video, I will cover the nighttime lighting. First, I will duplicate the view by clicking on these three dots here and duplicate. Now I'm going to rename this as view one night. Then I will change the time of day to nighttime by dragging the slider down like so. Now we can start adding light to the scene. First, let's talk about emissive materials. One easy way to make a material emissive is by adjusting the glow slider. Boom, now we have a lamp. Pretty easy, huh? However, this might not always work. As you can see here, when I increase the glow, I will lose the green color. So a better way to do this is by using twin motion emissive materials. You can go to the library, materials, neon, and you will find several emissive materials that you can use. I will use this one. Then I'm going to change the color to green and adjust the glow intensity like so. There we go. Now I have some green LED lights. There are also other types of neon materials. These include blinking lights, plus beacon lights, and multicolor lights. You can also adjust the speed of the light to make it blink faster or slower. Pretty cool, huh? I usually use these emissive materials for light bulbs too. But in this case, I also need to add a light source to illuminate the scene. Twinmotion has four different light sources that you can use. Omnidirectional light, neon light, spotlight, and IES light. For this scene, I will first use the omnidirectional light, which distributes lights in a spherical shape. I will place it in the middle of the ceiling light here. When doing this, you can use the orthogonal views to make it easier to position your light. Now I can adjust the intensity. You can also adjust the reflection slider to change how much the objects in the scene will reflect the light. The color slider will let you make the light cooler or warmer. Or you can also add a custom color as well. I can also adjust the radius here. And I will turn on the shadows as well. And finally, I can turn on day cycle so this light will only turn on at night. Next is the neon light which has a linear shape. I will use this light to light up my computer desk. To make it easier to position the light, I can select this wall here and press H to hide it. Now I can adjust the position and change the length. To duplicate the light, I can hold shift and drag my light like so. Like before, I will use the orthogonal views to place my light. I can also use the clipping tool to adjust the section cut until I can see my light. That looks good. Now I can change the color of the light to whatever I want. I think blue and purple looks pretty good. There we go, now I can make more adjustments to the light, or add another one if I like. Pretty cool, huh? This type of light is also really good for under cabinet lighting like this. Next is the spotlight, which distributes lights in a cone shape. Similar to before, I will use the orthogonal views to position my lights. And I can hold shift and drag to make copies of it. I can also increase the number of copies here as well. Like the other lights that we've used, I can adjust the light intensity, the color. I'll also turn on shadows and day cycle. But there are also new settings such as this one, which determines the angle of the cone. I will set this as 135 degrees. There's also attenuation, which refers to the fall off distance of the light. The further the distance, the softer the shadows. I will leave it around 5 meters for sharper shadows. Finally, there are IES lights, and since we already have these spotlights in place, 
there's an easy way of replacing them with IIS lights. First, go to the list of assets on the right and select the IIS lights. Then right-click and replace object. Now in the library, you can choose a light that you want to use as replacement, then drag it in here and click start to replace them. When doing this, the settings will reset, so you will have to adjust them again. When doing interior lighting, sometimes your objects lack shadows such as this plate of pancakes here. To fix this, I will search for shadows in the library. I will use the round shadows and drag it into the scene. Then I will adjust the size and position it to fit my object. Now I can adjust the offset, which basically determines the depth. 1% is the lowest it can be without making it disappear completely. Finally, I will adjust the opacity to make it a little lighter. As you can see, this is a great way to make the objects look more grounded and realistic. Now just repeat this for other objects in the scene. The scene is looking pretty good. The final thing I will do is to add a reflection probe. I will place this in the middle of the model, adjust the size, and position it so that it surrounds my whole scene. Then I will adjust the slider, which will affect the brightness of the reflected materials in the scene. There we go, this makes the reflection in the scene looks a lot better. And those are the tips for interior lighting in Twinmotion. If you want to give Twinmotion a try, then download it using this link here. That's all for today guys, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment below if you have any questions. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.